think this is one of the stranger things to break in the fridge. Just noticed in the fridge that had broken out. I think I'm going to attempt to repair it. Thinking whether I either use glue to glue that back in or just try something with a 3D printer. Let's try the 3D printer first. Next thing you need to do is draw an outline of the shape that I need to fill in. And I also want to kind of denote that there's a bit of a cracked line there and a bit of a cracked line kind of there. So I just want to make sure it's strong in those places. Next thing I want to do is make sure there's a scale in here for when I import this picture into Fusion 360. So Okay, so let's take a picture of this. So the first thing I want to do is to create a sketch. And for the 3D print, it's easier if I do that in the XY plane. Next thing I want to do is to insert the picture. So insert attach canvas. So I just select the face I want that on. I want to insert the image of the basket. So what that does is in the canvases, I've got a canvas there and what I want to do is calibrate that. So we'll click calibrate and then we'll just go from the, so just zoom in a bit. So that's the first point and then we'll just select another larger point that's further away for less error. And then we just say that's 140 millimeters. Okay, so now that's calibrated and the shape we want to draw here will then be the right size. So let's just fit that on the screen. So let's right click here and edit the canvas and we'll just make it a little bit less transparent so it's easier to see. So now we want to trace out that shape. So let's create a spline and just zoom in a little bit. So we'll just make some points. So where the shape changes direction more often, then I need to put more points. And you can always add more points in later on. And now we'll just go in and tweak these points until we get a, a shape. So it doesn't have to be exact here. So we'll just insert a new point in there. So I'll just hold the control key to get a finer movement on that. Again, this doesn't need to be exact. I'll show you why in a minute. See how we did. I think that looks quite good. 
So next what we want to do is to reduce the size of this shape. So we'll just go up to sketch, offset, and we'll just select the line we just drew. And then let's give that a, let's go two millimeter offset. And so what we'll have here is this shape here is going to be the bit that fills in the hole. So now we have to design something that's going to go above and below the shelf. And I'm thinking of doing that in two parts so that can join them together and that'll give it a little bit extra strength. I could of course just do one part and just leave this sitting inside so that it's just gravity holding it in and whatever else is sitting on top. So if I just turn on and off that sketch you'll see that inside line is clear of the line that we drew, which is good. Okay, so let's give this sketch a name, and this is the basket hole. And we'll just stop that sketch, and let's create a new sketch. And we'll call this lower plate. So we want to take into account that the basket's two and a half millimeters thick, so for the top plate, let's insert an offset plane. It's just going to be on the XY plane and let's just make sure I get the right direction there. 2.5 millimeters. So you see from the front there's a plane just above that. And let's create a sketch that is on that plane. We'll call that upper plate. The next thing I want to do for this plate here is I want to make it larger so that it covers the base of the basket so that things aren't going to be half on the plate and half on the, half off the plate. I'm going to add in some construction lines. That's the front of the basket from about there about there and let's take that line and X to make it a construction line and then I want to make it about 13 centimeters deep uh, alpha line and we'll place a point there we'll do the same thing alpha line select that one X for construction line okay so let's select that line and that one and we'll make them perpendicular and that one and that one will also make them perpendicular and then let's take that one and we'll make that 130 and same again for that one do a line again so that'll give me the back line of where I want the plate to go let's create a rectangle for the for the top plate so I just want it to be on the same direction as that one Let's just select that and make sure it's not a construction lines. And we want to make sure we're selecting the right line. Okay, so that's shorter one. And then we want to uh, just make that line a bit longer. So I'll just dimension that. I'm not sure how wide I want that to be just yet. Edit this dimension now, so 160. Okay, so that about matches the bottom plate, which is good. So let's stop that sketch now. Okay, so now we want to give the shapes some thickness. So just so I can see um, which things I'm selecting. I'll just do that on an angle. So we're going to be treating the XY plane as the base of the top plate is going to hide that and that for the time being and we want to select that shape there and say extrude the distance to that is the thickness of the base so that's two and a half millimeters okay and that's just going to create a new body this is the top plate because the hole is going to be attached to the top plate so you'll see why i did that in a second now we want to show the sketch of the the top plate and if we look from the front we should see that that should be meeting that top plate, which is cool. So now we want to give this top plate some th thickness. 
So we'll select that. I just got to go and select both those bits and extrude. Because I'm gonna have a bottom plate, this top plate doesn't have to be all that thick. I want it to be fairly thin, thinking that would give that three millimeters. And we're gonna select join and that's gonna to join to that uh, hole. Okay, I don't really want those sharp corners there, so let's modify that. And we'll do a fillet, select that line, select, oops, that line two. And control click that line two, the last one. So let's control click that. And we'll do a radius of five millimeters. Cool. So let's just see what that looks like. So that's the top plate. It's going to go from the front of the basket to the back of the basket. And it's going to give a nice even surface. If I just go to make these, and then what it'll actually do is with that cut out shape there being printed on the bottom and this hanging in midair. So let's make it a little bit easier to export and just flip that. So um, let's do a line. So we want to select uh, the body for that. And then two, we want the uh, XY plane and we want to flip that. So let's say OK and then let's uh, move that. So let's select uh, that body and let's just move that across a little bit and then say OK. Now we just select the top plate and uh, make a 3D print. And I don't want to send that to the print utility, I just want to save it as a file. And that'll just be top plate STL. Now we just add the models. Now we can see that made it easier to import this with the top plate just in the right place. We'll give it the coarsest layer height for the 0.4 millimeter nozzle that I have, which is should really be multiples of 0.4. I want to make this as strong as possible so let's try with more perimeters top and bottom and each side infill let's go for 20 percent and let's slice that and let's see what that's going to look like good and just export that G code. So now we just copy the G code files onto the SD card and that's that done. This is a finished article, uh, printed out just a top plate because it, it actually felt quite strong. So when that just fits in to here like that, then I can push down on that and that's not flexing. So I don't think I'll need the bottom plate. So just to stop that moving about a little bit, I think what I'll do is I'll maybe put a little bit of silicon sealer in there. fit this on and I'll just leave that to cure and I'll just try taking those edges and smoothing them off as well. That should give a nice good smooth finish. So I'll just leave a weight in there to keep that down. So let's see how we did with this. So that looks like it's fairly secure in there which is really good and it's not flexing too much. So let's install it and see how we do. So let's test this out now.
Yep, so that's quite strong, so that's, that's really good. So we'll go to put stuff back in there now. Cheerio!